Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel. The snowfall was here and there throughout our Wednesday, but tomorrow could be a different story. For the latest on our forecast, let's go straight to meteorologist Alyssa Triplett. Alyssa? Hey, good evening. We did see that lake response there, allowing for some of those scattered snow showers to continue at times, some breaks into some sunshine, melting down that snowfall pretty quickly. But what we'll note is that we do see another chance for some snow showers that will be taking us into tomorrow morning. And it is coming with a warm front lifting in, bringing us some of those southerly winds, which is going to allow for some unseasonably warm conditions tracking their way through the area. And I'll detail more, more in that full forecast in a few minutes. The Clemens Center in Elmira celebrated its first Ernie Davis Day today. Our Sonia Ellison talked to organizers about how the football legend had an impact on the Southern Tier. I think today was the best way to celebrate it with students, adults here at the Clemens Center. The Clemens Center celebrated Ernie Davis Day with a showing of the film The Express, as well as famous memorabilia like Davis's historical 1961 Heisman Trophy. Ernie Davis was the first ever African American to win the Heisman Trophy as a college sophomore for leading Syracuse to national championships. I always like when people see what he did. Davis lost his fight to leukemia in 1963 at age 23. He's a local hero, you know, I like football, so yes, of course, that story and I just feel very blessed that I have a second chance at life. Sorry, he didn't have an opportunity to get a transplant. Alec Ireland is a leukemia survivor honoring Davis's legacy by encouraging people to join Be The Match and the National Bone Marrow Registry, giving patients a fighting chance. African Americans have a 50% less chance of finding a match than whites. Matches are made not on blood type, but on your ethnicity. So it's very important that people of different ethnicities sign up to be donors. Ernie's memory also survives through Elmira Economic Opportunity Program and its $15,000 scholarship in his name. So any senior that is looking to apply for a scholarship, please get to the Community Foundation now. Elmira residents were moved by the Clemens Center's first celebration of Ernie Davis Day. It was really touching to knowing that he's no longer with us, but He's in here. Sonia Ellison, Big Fox News, Elmira. Steele Memorial Library officially opened the Friends of Chemung County Library District bookstore with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Volunteers run the store, which sells gently used, discounted books, DVDs, and puzzles. Proceeds go to programs and equipment for five libraries in Chemung County and its bookmobile. Anyone can donate gently used media to the bookstore by emailing the address on your screen. The city of Hornell will hold a free Christmas concert at its new Union Square Park on Friday, December 15th at 6 p.m., which will be the inaugural concert there. Local Hornell choirs and more will perform for a night full of music and lights. Seating will be provided. The new Union Square Park was just opened last month. It's at the corner of Genesee Street and Seneca Street. This year's Wreaths Across America Day is Saturday, December 16th at the Bath National Cemetery. Wreaths will be laid on the graves of those who served at the Bath National Cemetery to honor those veterans service. The wreath laying ceremony begins at noon and the placing of the wreaths will follow immediately after. This year's theme is serve and succeed. A reminder from the Elmira Department of Public Works that leaf pickup is set to begin again this Monday, December 11th. Crews took a week off from pickups, but the city recommends taking this time to re-rake any leaves that may have fallen and place them between your curb and sidewalk. The second round of pickups will run from December 11th until December 21st. Today, Governor Kathy Hochul cautioned New Yorkers about the rising flu cases across the state. I want to acknowledge that flu season is here again. And it has gone up. The number of flu cases in the state of New York now, would now define as, as prevalent in the state. That's a new category. Flu is prevalent here in New York. They are up 25 percent over one week. The governor also says two pediatric deaths related to flu have been reported by the state health department. She went on to remind New Yorkers now is the time to get their flu shots if they haven't already. Norman Lear, famous television writer and producer, died on Tuesday at his home in Los Angeles. He was 101 years old. 
Lear introduced political and social commentary into television comedy with shows like All in the Family, The Jeffersons, Good Times, and Maud. He was at the top of the television world through the 1970s and into the early 80s. Before his shows, comedy was basic and portrayed a world with no problems. The Jeffersons looked at the struggles faced by an upwardly mobile black family. The black family on Good Times dealt with poverty and discrimination. And the protagonist of Maud was an outspoken feminist. Senators are in a stalemate over sending billions more in aid to Ukraine. And yesterday's shouting match behind closed doors signals that neither side is willing to budge. Madeline Rivera has more from Washington. A meeting over Ukraine funding devolved into a shouting match in the Senate Tuesday. So here's what happened. Started off pretty bad, got better. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer accused Republicans of hijacking the closed briefing on Ukraine to push their border policies. Some senators even left the meeting in protest. You know, they get stuck. They got stuck. They, were, they, they didn't like it. And even one of them started, was disrespectful and started screaming at the gen, one of the generals and challenging him to why he didn't go to the border. GOP lawmakers are adamant there will be no more additional support for Ukraine without immigration reform. We agree Ukraine needs the money. And unless they're willing to shut down the 10,000 a day being released into the country, they're not going to get a deal done. The White House says the stakes couldn't be higher, with funding for Ukraine set to run out by the end of the year. And the impasse in Congress does not bode well for the president's push to send $61 billion of aid. A cynic would believe that Republicans have made this immigration demand because they want the Ukraine funding to go down. With talks on the brink of collapse, Ukraine's defense minister is sounding the alarm. It's for the American national interest to fight with authoritarian regimes, not to give them uh, any sign of weakness. While some Democrats say a failed procedural vote on the president's multi-billion dollar request sends a bad signal, other lawmakers say it may lead to a reset in talks. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Taylor Swift is Time's 2023 Person of the Year. The global superstar is capping off a record-breaking year with this honor. 33-year-old Swift kicked off her era's tour back in March, which became a global phenomenon, followed by the concert's release in theaters this fall. Swift also reached billionaire status this year. Other finalists for the Times title included Barbie, King Charles, and the Hollywood Strikers. Alyssa is back with our complete forecast next. Plus this. Parents in Congress are taking on big tech trying to force social media platforms to put up more guardrails for kids' safety online. I'm Rebecca Castor in Washington with this story coming up. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. We have stepped our way into December with some active weather conditions since the first day of December, which was Friday. We've had at least some measurable precipitation, definitely our outlying day that being there Sunday, where we had nearly an inch of precipitation, bringing us there to just about an inch and two tenths. Now, we note that we even added two precipitation values today with some of those snow showers. Now, note that Elmira's official reports don't include snow amounts, but it's at least still a uh, precipitation on the board. And and we will see another chance to put precipitation for the seventh day in a row as we head into our Thursdays. What we're seeing here as we roll through the overnight is that we have more of that northerly flow throughout the day, bringing us that lake response. But what we'll see into our Thursday is that a warm front is lifting in. So that is bringing some of these snow showers with it. There's we head through those morning hours. So note that areas that were previously wet from some snowfall today could potentially have some slick surfaces and then adding some snow 
snow showers too. Even sometimes with some mixed precipitation will be possible. So keep yourself wary that roadways could be again a little bit on the slippery side, especially through about the morning. Might linger with some flurries into the early afternoon as that system lifts east. So we do see that anywhere from a few tenths of an inch, even some isolated spots showing that inch marker there possible. Some of that again could mix out to some light rain showers at times at the tail end of it as that warm front lifts in as we are expected to see our temperatures get above that freezing mark after staying a bit more with a wintry chill today as we do have a forecast at high hitting about 41 degrees which is a normal high for this time of the year but again we start the day off near about that freezing mark so mostly snow showers some slight mix or a drizzle even that could create some of those uh, slick surfaces so take it easy but what we'll see is that we are going to become underneath that southwesterly wind not too strong when it comes to the afternoon we do increase slightly with those winds but staying under 20 mile per hour gusts what is going to be more notable is the consistency of that southerly wind that is going to be taking these temperatures and bringing them unseasonably warm for december standards as we hit those lower 40s for tomorrow we'll head into our friday morning with temperatures anywhere from upper 20s lower 30s but then see that we're going to bring our friday afternoon temperatures with some uh, afternoon sunshine into the 50s so bringing us 10 degrees above normal and we'll keep some of these mild temperatures into our saturday as well but by saturday what we're going to be talking about is some stronger winds now we see some winds up to about 20 miles per hour for our friday but we see the bigger increase there saturday into sunday especially there sunday with some high wind concerns in place but it's not only going to be just winds it is going to be associated with a low pressure system that is going to bring some rains well above normal temperatures almost flirting with the 60s there and then following that system we'll see some quick clearing but also bringing that cooling.